did we really kill Call of Duty? Are you at fault? Am I at fault? Are gamers really at fault for Call of Duty dying right now? Or is Activision really doing something sneakily behind the scenes? Today we're gonna be checking out this video that talks about the depressing decline of Call of Duty. And guys, uh, you might actually be wrong, wrong. Uh, later on because I watched a little bit and I felt like that we were wrong. Like the video if you don't want to see skill-based matchmaking in first-person games. Dislike the video if you love cheaters and skill-based matchmaking, but roll it and wait for it, guys. Wait for it. Not a controversial this. statement to say that Call of Duty has seen better days. Despite yeah. being relatively popular, at least, if you categorize its success by sheer numbers, it doesn't seem to be doing that bad. Warzone is fairly True. popular right now, and it looks like the most recent entry in the franchise, Modern Warfare 3, has been enough to prevent the downward spiral it was caught in with Modern Warfare 2 just last- One in the comments if you bought Modern Warfare 3, the uh, 2023 version, two in the comments if you have not bought it, and if you have bought it, are you liking it? Because I hear constantly that the gameplay is fun, but let's be real, man, like, if it wasn't for Warzone and Call of Duty Mobile, and perhaps if it wasn't about the, the BBC and the friendly UAV online bundles, then I guess Call of Duty would be in such a bad spot, but because of Warzone, it's killing it. Last year. But why did it ever end up on the ropes to begin with? Well, aside from the infernal attachment to our mortal coils and the finality of the passage of time, which is a roundabout way of saying things get old and less popular, the game is yeah. probably the most polarizing first-person shooter on the market right now. It is. On one hand, it everybody is. who plays first-person shooter games has probably played it at some point. Hell and yeah. probably Hell really yeah. enjoyed playing it too. But then... Black Ops 1 is where I started this thing, man. I was in high school, bruh. And re I, I remember the day Black Ops 1 released. All the boys were missing. They were only chicks. And I was like, yo, what's happening? Like, I don't want to be chasing the pom-pom the today. Why are all the boys missing? But that day, bro, I did chase the pom-pom, bro. <laughs> but later on, I found out that it was because of Call of Duty. And then I went ahead and bought Black Ops 1. That's where I started. That's my story, bro. Call of Duty kind of stopped being cool. Yeah, At least, sadly. unless you were really into its esports scene. And even then, that's still a relatively niche esports scene. How do and Call so of Duty go- And so many people get caught cheating at the esports From scene, universally right? loved, to universally hated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that face bomb, bro. We just right, uploaded right, a video about Helldivers 2 and feel like that game's ability to commit to a certain creative vision and stick to it was hugely instrumental in its success. But that game had a relatively small team and a relatively small budget compared to the Call of Duty Studios yeah. and, of course, Activision Blizzard. Hopefully this video- Activision got 3,000 devs and we constantly hear three years, three years, 3,000 devs. And me meanwhile, you look at something like Helldivers, just some people made it, right? Some passionate people made it and the game blew up. video provides a cautionary tale of the Icarus of first-person shooters, uh -oh. a franchise that soared to great heights but ultimately got too close to the sun. Man. This is the story of Call of Duty's decline. Sadly. Call of Duty was unique one. in the sense that it was able to take multiplayer arcade FPS mechanics and sell them at a widespread scale everybody could get behind. The game was well regarded for its immersive storytelling, its single player component. What a lot of people don't know about this franchise is that it at one point tried to make a play for cinematic immersion with yeah. famous depictions of events like the Battle of Stalingrad, wherein the player had to pick up a rifle off the ground Holy. of a fallen soldier, armed only with a clip of ammunition in their hand. The oh, game also featured the Normandy invasion, with the vicious rain of MG42 fire from entrenched positions right in front of you. It actually wasn't until Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare when it took a decisive setting difference. Putting Man, you modern, the original Modern Warfare was so good for the time. You guys gotta understand that you go from something that was looking the way it was looking just like... We, we've seen it a couple of seconds ago, right? To something like this with... For, first time ever in history, a game coming out with create a class system, bro. you in the shoes of a thrilling action movie ride, incorporating political gambles from Middle Eastern warlords to Eastern Bloc crime syndicates. Artistic depth and scope from the sound effects to the environments and the voice acting all played a role in making creative, interactive narratives. Yeah, bomb right. What the hell kind of name is soap, eh? How do Muppet hey. like you pass selection? Classic. And this is sort of where the culture of the game solidified. It solidified itself with a pretty robust single-player level design theory showcase. 
Call of Duty 4 was well known for a couple of missions. One of- I already am getting like Vietnam flashbacks because like we know we're gonna go from this to like the abomination that we're getting currently, okay? Which uh, put you in the hands of the guns on a titanically destructive AC-130 gunship. The distance from the carnage and the laws of physics taken into account. The yeah. time it takes for the shells to reach their target while you wait. Man. Silently, you see explosions, gunfire, and the casual nature of the crew members as they command something that seems akin to an ominous dragon just looming above in the sky. Yep. Oh, oh, we're going to commandeer civilian transport on the main highway. Cover us. Ground units are requiring alternate transport at this time. <laughs> but that guy's pissed. That's a nice truck. And also the craziest thing here is that, like, I also do believe that back in the days, all of this felt unique and new to us, right? Now they have done it so many times over and over. Sure, the quality of the games are bad versus what we were getting back then, because the content back then felt original, new, fresh, and also real. And today it's like the quality is piss poor, filled with microtransactions, the, the, uh, the, the $20, $30 skins every single week. And, and on top of that, diversity hires all the woke crap that's being pushed down to gamers throat there's a whole lot of nonsense versus back then and i also do believe the fatigue the gaming fatigue is real first person shooter games fatigue is also real and it does not feel fresh but but when you look at something like this this is black ops one look at that versus whatever the crap whatever crap we're getting nowadays it's night and day difference for bro. offering a focus on the pacific front as u.s marines are face to face with japanese soldiers running straight towards you from a concealed jungle landscape the sweltering heat gleaming through dense, thick tree lines, screaming in rage with bayonets attached to their rifles. Then the next minute, you will be sniping and scurrying your way through war-torn Stalingrad again, with a Soviet sergeant played by none other than Gary Rest Oldman, enough. who would go on to win an Academy Award for his portrayal of Winston Churchill in the film Darkest Hour. For three days, I have hunted him. For three days, luck alone has saved his wretched life. My name is Victor Reznor! And I will have my revenge! You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth! Damn. Over time, Thanks. Call of Duty developed a shared and loved culture and cast of characters. But you came for the campaign and stayed for the multiplayer. And zombies. While one of these things was what made Call of Duty a cultural staple, the other was what made it an exercise in multiplayer FPS design. Call of Duty was responsible. Yeah, I'm getting a nostalgic boner right now watching that Black Ops 1 multiplayer trailer scene. That was fake from the Black Ops 1 tra multiplayer trailer. I remember this. I remember when it first came out. I remember when the seconds dropped that game. I, I remember all of it. I remember all of it. I sound like a boomer talking about, uh, talking like this. Uh, how many of you actually, what, what's your first Call of Duty game uh, and how many of you remember that? For create a class. And that longevity has ramifications throughout the industry to this day. Just about any shooter game made in 2024 will have some kind of modularity involved in terms of what stuff you want to bring into the battlefield. But create a class has almost created an FPS ocean that we've been swimming in for many years, and we're more or less fish who've forgotten we're in water. Call of Duty was a victim of its own success in some ways. It developed a framework for which many FPS games were built on, what? but it couldn't really tack what- Oh man, you really gonna do this? You really gonna insert Battlefield 3 as well? <gasps> Man, my nostalgic boner was already there. Now I'm getting a double, man. Uh, listen, I love Battlefield 3. Hand on top of this bottle of water, bruh. The Battlefield 3, Modern Warfare 3 original, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2. That time, that era was so precious. A and back then, we took it for granted. Because we thought that gaming would go uh, above from here. It will always keep on climbing from here on out and it's gonna be better and better and better little did we know that we're all gonna be proven wrong wrong uh, 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 bro like I, I swear to god man if you have played these games uh, and you play the games that are now you're gonna see like a night and day difference sure the quality of the graphics have improved which is good but graphics are not everything though graphic needs to be good don't get me wrong right but it's more than that one way or the other, without a huge amount of pushback. It was a fish that could grow wings, but couldn't breathe air. Chapter 2 Call of Duty was responsible for innovating arcade multiplayer FPS. Quick time to kill, fast-paced movement, and personalization was the name of the game. But the game certainly looks, feels, and plays very differently now to then. Obviously, we can have a full separate conversation about the artistic side of things, 
and that will certainly be elaborated on. But before we do that, it's important to contextualize that this was still FPS game design in its childhood. Not quite its infancy, but we were still kind of coming to grips with what we could make an FPS game do at scale and at mass market. The point is, the game had large scale and breadth in terms of the sandbox and space it constructed. Oh, what it had man. a harder time figuring out was the nuts and bolts. The game went through tons of different iterations with create a class, and that's usually what made it distinct among each individual title. And from game to game- Back then, they were really trying. Back then, they were really trying to make it as good as possible, innovate as much as possible. Right now, they are not, because Warzone is free to play and it's successful. Part of me feels like that the normal multiplayer needs to go free as well. Uh, normal multiplayer needs to go free as well, because it's so bad right now. But, but And I know, and I heard your arguments as well, that Yo, if it ever goes free, it's gonna attract more cheaters. You're right. But hey, like, the problem is already severe, right? And the way I see it is that if it goes free to play, then at least you won't have to waste money on buying it. Because every year it comes out, everybody's like, I'm not gonna buy it this year, but second, still buy it. It, it becomes the best-selling game. Now, Modern Warfare 3 2023 is the only Call of Duty game that I did not buy. And I was saying, okay, I'm gonna wait till January, February. If there's a reason, if they give me a reason to buy short, then I will go ahead and buy. But so far, it, we're, in, we're in April. I don't have any reason to buy, and I have not, and I'm looking forward to Call of Duty 2024. If that turns out good, sure, I'll buy it. If it's not, then I'm ready to skip on another Call of Duty game, okay? I already broke the cycle, but I feel like that they need to go free with Call of Duty and make it good, because seriously, I don't think they care about it because Warzone is successful, and Warzone is bringing all the money, and now on top of Warzone, they got Call of Duty Mobile that's bringing the big bucks right now, and on top of all, well, uh, when you have the Fairly AI, when you got the BBC bundles at your disposal that Sigas are buying it left and right, I mean, like, the entire $20 skins and bundles, right? It's like, bro, why even try? Why even try? Because back then it was dependent on the game actually being good because if the game was good then you're gonna spend 60 us dollars plus taxes now it's like hey you want to buy it? whatever buy it or don't buy it we got warzone free you got skins coming out every single week yeah we're gonna nickel and dime you like that and on top if you buy a 70 dollars full price multiplayer game we're still gonna nickel and dime you every single week with new bundles new skins and people are gonna buy it and people do buy it. they make most amount of money from microtransactions than the actual sales of the game ain't that crazy guys that they make more money from microtransactions than the actual sales of the game makes sense when warzone is free and when mobile is free and, and that's what it is makes sense but but still like just think about food for thought right versus game then, each call of duty then, sort of had a unique identity have... due to this but at a certain point a new game coming out every year started to get a little bit old mm -hmm. at a certain point you needed to do new things one example they tried to do was lean more into the movement this is where the subgenre of so-called movement shooters began to Holy, emerge. Yeah. Now, Call of Duty was not responsible for the genesis of movement shooters. That had Time been happening fall. in the background for a while. But Call of Duty was so big that it couldn't just ignore this part of the FPS. Bl Black Ops 3 was the last good Call of Duty minus the campaign and minus the supply drops and the microtransaction bull crap. But other than that, one of the best futuristic Call of Duty game and Zombies was just truly amazing. Black Ops 2 Zombies, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 1 Zombies. Uh, 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 one of my, if not my all-time favorites. A ...space anymore. However, the game's grappling with this topic did a lot of damage to the brand because I had a hard time trying to find the right way to do it before they finally just gave up. Call of Duty runs on a yearly release cycle. To offload the labor intensity and make sure there's a reasonable timeline of development, different development companies were allocated to individual titles. Another element was introduced to the Call of Duty carousel with the release of Advanced Warfare in 2014, developed by a third player, Sledgehammer, Sledgehammer. Games. Yeah. The only point at which the public was familiar with Sledgehammer was their involvement with the production of Modern Warfare 3 alongside yeah. Infinity Ward. Mm -hmm. Advanced Warfare was Sledgehammer's first solo project and a concerted, deliberate effort to lean into the game's potential as a movement shooter. In yeah. fact, movement shooter. it would be massive for demarcating a hugely controversial Rubicon. Bruh. 
Honestly, like looking back, it it wasn't that bad. Guys, uh, looking back, it, <laughs> I mean, I would rather Advanced Warfare 2 than Call of Duty Van garbage at this point. <laughs> but would you rather a World War 2 Call of Duty game? Now, listen, I'm not putting Call of Duty World at War, which was clearly on the World War 2 setting. Not putting that because that game is good. Okay, I even I have to agree. Even though I'm fatigued and a lot of people are fatigued with the WW2 World War 2 settings, right? okay but that game is just one of a kind and think about it we're never we're really never gonna get a game like world at war because back then they had balls back then they were not hiring devs because of diversity diversity they were not having diversity hires for the sake of it listen diversity is good but forced diversity is what's happening right now these things are hiring people based on their color gender and orientation rather than their actual talent i mean who cares whether you're white black purple or you're like lgb or not lgb hire a person a human that's good for the job regardless of whether that person is they them or you know straight man white guy black guy brown guy i'm a brown man uh everybody's like pulling a race uh, race card and as a brown man i'm sick and tired of everybody playing that race card guys. But, but back then they truly had balls but you have seen call of duty world war 2 that came out in 2017 and call of duty van garbage i believe that came out in 2021 i could be wrong right uh and those games not even close to something like World at War. So I rather Advanced Warfare 2. And, and obviously, like a setting like World War 2 is kind of overplayed right now. So many games have done it. It's overdone. And I rather this than that. Thoughts? Agree? Disagree? Let me know. The exoskeleton in Advanced Warfare brings a ton to the table. You got speed and strength and verticality, new movement sets like boost and dodge and slam, the ability to use technology like the augmented reality system and the mag gloves for new ways to climb. I mean, it, it, it really, we call it the heart and soul of the Advanced soldier and everything it brings is really a, a pretty radical new way to play call of duty the jetpack cod era yeah! yeah back then people hated it i have to agree i have to agree but black ops 3 was love and now, now here's the thing more love than ever the jetpack shooter era didn't start here because titanfall had just released earlier in the spring Titanfall was unique in the offering of a new spin on the arcade shooter formula, this time throwing in high-speed jetpacking, wall running, and fast-paced gunplay. What savvy people are surely thinking of is the lineage of Titanfall. It is shared in Call of Duty, developed by Respawn, its genesis enshrined by former Call of Duty devs. Now, Advanced Warfare featured the exosuit. It was designed to wink and nudge in the direction of popular sci-fi movies and TV at the time. Yep. From Elysium yeah, yeah. to Oblivion to Edge of Tomorrow. The opening kick of the World Cup this year was a paraplegic wearing an exoskeleton. I mean, it's it's really a remarkable invention of technology today. And as the cornerstone to Call of Duty, it's, it's given us a ton of potential. Okay, so when you think of a jetpack in a video game, what do you usually think of? The first time I played with the jetpack, Hey, yo, that was Fortnite earlier? We're sick as we're flying? What? So we we got flying sh flying crap like that in Fortnite and I didn't know. Damn, Pack in a shooter game was Star Wars Battlefront. No, not, not this one. Go back a little bit more, sister. Yeah! Okay. So the Dark Trooper basically got launched way up into the air really quickly, which was really useful for traversal. You could get up to high elevation or go across chasms in a way that other characters couldn't. But your mobility advantage was offset by only being able to fight at close range with a shotgun. This is not like the last jetpack cod in the series, Black Ops 3, which was much more floaty, kind of like a dragonfly hovering around. Black Ops 3, I mean, this movement is deliberate, punchy. It has weight to it. There are stakes for making the wrong movement tech at the wrong time. Momentum is involved, and that's mm -hmm. essentially what advanced warfare was too. You can jump up, then go to the side, or go down for a little slam, and a little slide. Slide to the left. <laughs> and it looks simple, but when you watch the yeah. movement lobbies of Advanced Warfare that are apparently- They were really calling this innovation! And Call of Duty Ghost had that fish AI thing. <laughs> most- They called it most advanced fish AI ever. Bruh. It, it's like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, uh, 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 like come It's still on, around man, in 2024. Like... You'll find that there's still a community that plays the game to this day because they just- Yeah. They just vibe with the movement. It we ran rhymes. a poll on the couch to see what you guys felt. Black Ops 3, And it absolutely. seems to be the consensus that Black Ops 3 was the most beloved jetpack COD. Yeah, Probably yeah, to nobody's yeah. surprise, Infinity Ward's entry the year after did not rank very high at all. 
Still boasting one of the worst like to dislike ratios Man. in YouTube video history. And, and you know what? To pours, I, I believe he's gonna talk about it. I think he's gonna and to put put uh, 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 salt on the wounds. The, uh, guess what? EA came out with Battlefield One trailer right after. And Battlefield 1 succeeded because obviously it was a good game, but not that it was a good game. But back then, everyone was doing like futuristic games and Call of Duty went so crazy with the <laughs> infinite garbage that, uh, you know what, when they came out with something like World War 1, it felt actually good right and infinite warfare i'll give it credit it's actual zombies was very good i did not play its campaign but sick is obviously like infinite warfare campaign was really really good i didn't play it but that's what a lot of people say so i think it's true uh zombies honestly wasn't bad it wasn't bad but in the very beginning it was considered bad because you guys got you guys gotta understand that we had black ops 3 zombies so we came from such a high to such a low that's how it felt like at the time but looking back at it and even during infinite war Warfare, it felt it, it started hitting right and people got used to it and people started liking it and, and sitting now right now in 2024 maybe you're watching this video in 2025 or 2050 uh, what call of duty we're on did we get wars on 10 let me know but yeah right now let's be real infinite warfare zombies wasn't that bad in comparison it's all about perspective and comparing it to what we're getting and we're only comparing call of duty versus call of duty right now in terms of zombies here back then zombies was good versus how it is right now hopefully call of duty 2024 zombies would be good with its launch trailer this three-year stint of movement cod probably set the groundwork for more frustrating decisions later down the line as the developers had a tough time trying to ascertain what was going to work and what wasn't going to work. Yeah. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 leaned heavily into a very particular kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. A vibe that yep, emphasized yeah, yeah. raw, gritty, operator, tactical sorts of stuff. The game got a fresh new paint job with a new engine, and in particular, much more cinematic presentation. Reloading animations were poppy, snappy, you could feel every click, clack, patty whack with camera shakes. It was in your face and very upfront about what it was. A return to form. It was yeah. also, more importantly than anything else, not a jetpack cod, which meant that the movement was slower. Damn. Sorry, hold... <sighs> something's... Which meant that the movement was slower... Which... Look, I'm not mad, I just... I don't... I don't know what's happening. Which meant that... <laughs> <laughs> now, honestly, Modern Warfare 19 is a solid game, but so many campers, slow ass movement, and, and they, they they started with the the entire skill based match again. Cheaters started to be rampant, but in the very beginning, it wasn't like this. We didn't have that many cheaters, but later on, and now it's like game is infested with cheaters and all the friendly UAV online bundles. That right, you you know what I'm saying? But the friendly UAV online came in like Modern Warfare 2022, <laughs> actually, but. Other than that, Modern Warfare 19 is a solid game, even I have to agree, but when it first came out, I didn't like it, but it started growing on people, and it grew on me as well. It's a good game, but it's like, I don't want to play if that makes sense. Bruh. You know what I mean? Because it's just very slow. It's like opposite of what Call of Duty should be. It felt like Battlefield, right? And the worst version of Battlefield, because when you think Battlefield, yeah, you're thinking about planes, tanks, do 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 do. And right now, Battlefield is also not that good either. Uh, yeah, man. Like, the FPS scene is quite frankly dry right now it's chalked and the only i'm sad to say regardless of what your opinion and what my opinion is objectively the only not subjectively objectively the only big and decent i won't say good but decent fps game that's out on the market is call of duty guys it really is call of duty there is no competition there is zero battlefield is not what it used to be right x define Maybe by the time you're watching it came out and let me know how that goes because quite frankly I don't think that game will truly kill COD. It might be good. I hope it's good But even if it's good, let's be real guys. It's not gonna overtake Call of Duty, right? Let's be real. It's not even Rainbow Six Siege couldn't Battlefield couldn't right like nobody can by the looks of it Because Call of Duty has a cult like following. It's the McDonald's version Suckers hate it, but suckers love it. McDonald's, everybody knows it's unhealthy for you, but suckers still want to <laughs> get a quick bite and quick dopamine, a cheap dopamine. That's what Call of Duty is right now. It Isn't really it is. is incredibly important in this game. 
if you want to be a good player. To be completely transparent, the person creating this video is not knocking any of the content creators that were just referenced. But it shows an example of how art style doesn't translate to gameplay mechanics, especially when you're trying to get away from a jetpack kind of sci-fi setting. These guys have jetpacks. Of course they'll slide around. These guys don't. Who played these kinds of games? Everybody. Your dad, your uncle, the manager at your gym. Every dude. Every dude played Call of Duty. And then dudes kind of stopped playing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Call of Duty Vanguard was one of the worst performing. <laughs> Gaming in general became a much more mainstream hobby, but the only kinds of people who still play COD are probably just really dedicated FPS nerds. It's popular, yeah, but it's not really popular in the same way it used to be. Now, there's a time investment, kind of like 40k. People want to be good at the video game, and they want to feel rewarded when they yeah. make a good play. The greatest the twist of irony, then, was how Call of Duty tried to establish itself in this new shift. By Sadly. putting a certain coat of paint on the game, Sekis uh, uh, played the game like their life depends on it. That also did ruin the fun because a lot of people, because back in the days, like I would like put a YouTube video, a podcast, a movie in the background, watch that and play it, right? How many of you guys Bruh. actually play games nowadays without the game sound on? I used to do that, and sometimes right now I go back to Black Ops Cold War and then Nuketown 24 7 playlist. The map is small, love the map, it's fast paced, right? It feels Call of Duty, Call of Duty is. And that's the only Call of Duty that I play right now without sound on, and I can actually play decently, and the skill based matchmaking feels low. Cheaters are not as rampant. I feel like that I haven't even encountered a cheater. By the way, I play on PlayStation 5, so there's that. I'm a console peasant, right? And that's the only Call of Duty that I'm currently playing, and I actually have a little bit of fun playing. That's that's the only thing I have fun on, because why? Because I'm, like, able to watch YouTube videos. It's more so about, like, the YouTube videos and the podcasts that I'm listening to versus the, the game that I'm playing, because quite frankly, I feel like that right now if I play Call of Duty, I cannot play past like one game which is Bruh. just such a sad thing to do if i it's such sad thing to say if i was only playing call of duty with sound on, sound on and i was not multitasking i think i couldn't play call of duty because the game is not what it used to be but i do enjoy enjoy this level of play where you know you're watching something in the background relaxing and you don't have to know life and play the game like your life depends on it i think we're truly m missing and lacking that in call of duty because everybody plays it like their life depends on it and then nobody really has fun certain kind of art style but still making it very clear this is a video game not real life but and remember play single like, player campaigns used it, to be a pretty important component of the experience the culture was you played the single player you had fun then the multiplayer was the side product that sustained itself over time. You'd throw mm -hmm. out some map packs for a little more dough, and then on to the next one. But Call of Duty, despite changing up the mechanics a little, the basic gameplay loop, domination, search, etc., create a class. That was still the same. MLG trick shotters and hyper sweats were a thing back in the day, oh, but yeah. it wasn't really cool yet. It was just kind of a thing some kids did if they were really into it. Yeah. Now, everybody consumes everybody. content online, and what looks cool in a YouTube video is what people are going to try and emulate. So we started dropping terms like slide canceling. What the heck is a slide cancel? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, how do I slide cancel in this game? Can you slide cancel in this? I don't even know. Nah, you can't slide cancel in this one. <laughs> and they also made the menu so like bad though. You know, like back in the days, like you see a stark difference between current menus, current day Call of Duty menus versus the menus that we got back in the days that were so simple yet so easy and effective to use versus whatever crap they're doing nowadays. Like. Slide cancel is exactly what it sounds like. You go into the slide animation, then quickly reset it so you can get your gun up and shoot. In the context of a shooter game, a fun little mix-up to throw your opponent's aim off. Yeah. Now, when we talk about this stuff, we don't sound like we're talking about a shooter game anymore. When I think of shooter game, I think of skulking around in a bush, my positioning, my relation to the opponent, my aim, shoot, and then the kill, bada bing, bada boom. Now I gotta do this and this at yeah. the same time? I gotta shoot and move? You esports sweats are ruining my fun. The biggest yeah, component yeah, yeah. of the disconnect for the series started here. Because I'm-
skill mismatch, and cheaters galore, $20, the bundle skins every single week, lack of content, multiplayer feeling soulless, and Sigas playing like their life depends on it is a recipe of disaster right now, man. On one hand, you had a kick it and relax kind of gamer on the couch, Call of Duty to every guy shooter. For, let's face it, people who didn't play shooter games all the time, it was supposed to be the one shooter game everybody had. Yeah. Then the shooter agreed. game nerd, who's played everything, Titanfall, Battlefield, Halo, Gears of War, Rainbow Six, who knows what else, comes into the fray, and then suddenly you get this casual versus esports war. And this is happening across the entire industry. We just spent three years trying not to make the game too inaccessible with advanced movement, to make more games where the most involved player could slip and slide all over the place and make this look a lot more like this. The immersion was broken, and we sat there, growing up, during the Call of Duty beta overnight. Our childlike fascination with the virtual world, gone, manipulated and twisted, so that you could slide and not slide. Look what you did. Well, nearly every industry took a financial hit this past year, the gaming world saw massive growth. NPD reports a 33% increase in overall spending. <laughs> Damn, but Warzone in 2019 was what set the stage for Call of Duty's popular fame moving forward. We had doctor, 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 doctor. This, 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 this. Respect, 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 respect. <laughs> yeah, man. Warzone. I, I don't know, man. Warzone definitely is the money maker for Activision. But you guys think that Warzone is what ruined Call of Duty multiplayer? Is it? Is Warzone the reason why the multiplayer is dying? I do believe so myself. That's the reason. I, I, because like all of their focus and attention is going on Warzone and really think about it this is this is normal for everybody for example like if you if you have a chick if you got two chicks right yeah. all right and one is showing you love the other chick is not showing you love you're gonna obviously go to the chick that is showing you more love than the other one right it's simple as that so they're seeing more money coming in they're making more money than god they're seeing money coming in like a tsunami with warzone so why in the hell they would uh, work on multiplayer but like that's so like but, but but like they gotta understand that their multiplayer audience is big as well but I think they're like, hey, uh, Warzone audience is bigger, so we don't care about multiplayer audience. This is why I'm saying, like, make multiplayer free to play. So maybe then they're going to care because they're going to see bigger numbers for multiplayer as well. And surely they're going to be coming out BBC bundles regardless, guys. They're going to be coming out with $20 skins, friendly UABs online all day, every day, every week, every month, every year, right? They're going to do it. So why not make multiplayer free, right? Agree, disagree, let me know what, what are your thoughts. And maybe if it's free, then they're gonna start to care a little bit more. Maybe, maybe. Call of Duty Vanguard. Uh -oh. <coughs> uh oh. Oh, sorry. Black Ops Cold War does something a little different. Hey, let's have the new style of COD, but let's make the time to kill just a little bit longer, like it was way back in the day. So instead of three bullets, it's more like four or five. Tracking the target means you gotta have better accuracy and follow through throughout the course of the engagement which means that if somebody can do the cool little slip and slide, there's a little more dueling. There's a little bit more combat that feels back and forth. Yeah. And then Modern Warfare 2 comes out again and slows everything down super slow. Basically, yeah, like, bruh. Call of Duty, if it was Tarkov, Tark of Duty, fast time. But, but I do have to agree that Modern Warfare 2022 movement and speed was much better than Modern Warfare 19. It's just that Modern Warfare 2022 had so bad of content pipeline. You guys, I don't think you understand. To get one new map, they took five months. <laughs> one new map. These suckers are remasters, glory, recycling content, glory, right? And they, they took five months to drop one new map. And you want to know how many times we got those skins? Every single week! Every single week! Sometimes more than one skin a week. Listen, it is crazy! It's like you buy the game full price and then like all the content is locked behind either Battle Pass or, or the, the, the microtransaction devil uh, actors in Bobby Kotick's shop in, 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 in the game, right? I don't mind Battle Pass, but guys, like, come on, dog. You're gonna have Battle Pass. You're gonna have new, no new actual subst uh, substantial content, but you're gonna have like $20 skins every single week. Get the F out of here, bro. Kill. 
slower, deliberate movement. Ish. And, and then they it almost kills- And they called it most advanced Call of Duty game as well, right? It's a franchise. Round and round it goes. Where COD goes, nobody knows. Call of Duty was so big oh, that it couldn't become bruh. anything specific. And it did the cardinal sin of AAA gaming. Trying to please everyone and pleasing no one. No one, yeah. One talking point that permeates extensively throughout the industry Fortnite, is just how multiplayer yeah. games look. Whether people like it or not, Fortnite made everybody fall in line with the world of multiplayer microtransactions. Yeah, And if sadly. you can cut a deal with a corporation to represent Warhammer 40k, you're gonna do it. But Fortnite didn't really have a particularly specific art theme direction. Call of Duty did. Multiplayer matches of Call of Duty were pretty simply laid out. Here's a map. What are the two appropriate factions here? It's the Russians versus the Germans. Yeah. Each faction even had a unique track that would play before now. you rolled into battle and unique uniforms to each of those factions. Yeah, even Battlefield did that back in the days. I remember Battlefield 3 felt so good, uh, so unique, so real. Battlefield 3 is not a real uh, simulator, but it's it's re it feels real, and it also is fun to play. That's what Call of Duty was. It, it felt real and also fun. It's not Tarkov real. It's not a real life simulator, but it still feels real and fun at the same time. That's what Battlefield 3 did so right. It was like US versus uh, Russia all the time, right? And I believe Battlefield 4 did like add China in the mix. So US versus China, China versus Russia, Russia versus US, US versus China, back and forth, vice versa, all that, right? With unique factions. Uh, and, and we had like skins, uh, dedicated skins for all the classes. Like Battlefield 3 had Assault, Medic, Engineer, uh, uh, the, the Light Machine, guy the, the recon the sniper guy and all of the skins were unique and, and and they look good too right now it's like this is <laughs> this is what we're getting man like, what I, I don't know man it, yeah guys like it just don't feel the same it don't hit the same bro unique capture the objectives evolved. unique lines nowadays call of duty may play up the cinematic vibe a little bit it does so in the single player campaigns but not it multiplayer. tends to be this way only at the beginning of the new release. Yeah. As the game ages, <laughs> yeah. people buy the new anime skin, the new yeah. esports skin, and all sorts of flashy and shiny colors, shiny colorful bullets, assassination animations, entire cosmetic kits that are designed around a certain design theme. It's not to say that they're not creative. They certainly are. One creative nod to FPS gaming history features the game's double barrel shotgun operated and animated like the one from the classic 90s FPS game, Doom. Oh, damn. I didn't Complete know Complete with that. the sounds, jerky frame rate, animations, and everything else in between. But most of the skins usually just consist of taking XYZ gun and making it pink or blue or red or based off a famous superhero yeah. or something. Cosmetics have taken a decidedly strong seat in front of the vibe. The tactical Oscar Mike over and out. Vibe. I do, I do like that the weapon camos. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I think they're cool, but it's like dog. Every one of them that looks good, it's like behind a twenty dollar paywall. Like why? I, I mean, any of you actually buy it? Like, do you buy it, guys? I mean, if you do, let, let me know. I mean, uh, I wish I was rich like you, though. I mean, I ain't rich like that, bro. I don't get, get the iPhone, get more with that crap, right. bro. It doesn't affect Get gameplay. More. It just feels weird. And that weird disconnected feeling is just kind of icky. That's all there is to it. There's no particularly empirical metric about it. Something's just kind of It feels off. soulless. It feels soulless. like the identity, the heart of the game just isn't really there anymore. And is sure, it, the game yeah. is fun. If you really, really do like the gameplay, it's bizarre to consider how we got here in the first place. Modern Warfare 3 doubled down on the demand for faster pace flashy movement and longer mm. time to kill after the mm. series spent several years deciding whether or not it wanted flashy movement. Modern Warfare 3 ended up releasing on a year and a half long turnaround. So it begs a better question. How come Activision Blizzard was so disconnected from the ground game of its production? Yeah. Call of Duty is a massive license. And as many problems show in terms of size attribute. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 budget is now purported to range between two... <laughs> Oh my god, and you know the craziest thing here is that this is just a rumor, so don't take it as like real gospel, but I would not be surprised. Uh, and I've seen like numerous reports on it, I think it's real, but I just don't want to believe it. Apparently we're hearing that Modern Warfare 3 2023, they apparently put in a billion dollars. Oh shit, oh shit! 
I, I, I cannot comprehend it because you know the campaign is our recycle hash disaster of Warzone. Multiplayer is remastered maps of the original Modern Warfare 2022. Zombies is not existent. They put they're using Warzone map. Warzone map for zombies. It's like what the hell? Where did you spend that one million? Uh, I, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that one billion, well, not one million, but one billion with a B. They, I wouldn't be surprised if that they put all that money behind influencer marketing and marketing the game because let's let's be real, that's where their return would be the highest. It's like if they get people to buy it, they're gonna make more money. And this is where this is what they target rather than the game's quality. They're like, okay, put all the money behind it, marketing, kind of makes sense, right? And also put all that money behind making the twenty dollar skins every single week. Abusion of games. If the game is too big. You can end up with too many cooks in the kitchen yeah. and a lack of a clear vision yeah. and lack of a creative approach. Comparatively, Helldivers 2 is killing just about every shooter game on the market, at least for now, with a for modest now. dev team for a $40 release. Crazy. And the finals, a relatively new free-to-play game, has attracted a modest following for a fraction of the development costs of your typical blockbuster Call of Duty game. It seems that nowadays, Call of Duty is a lot like Marvel movies. There were some beloved Marvel movies, yeah, and some of the oh, ones in man. the formula later on down the road still did really well and were universally praised and respected. Cultural staples. But when's the last time you've heard someone talk about a Marvel license yeah. recently? Dune Part 2. It, it genuinely, bro, like, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the craziest thing here is that I've seen like some Marvel movies like here and there, like the Iron Man, Captain America here and there without understanding. It's like one of the movies, it's one of those movies that I went out uh, with my friends to watch without caring about it. And then when Avengers Endgame, I shit you not, literally when Avengers Endgame came out, I and my friends, my homies went to watch and my homies were like, yeah, all of this is connected, this and that. And I was like, oh shit, okay. You know what? Like, I'm, I was start starting to notice and this is when I truly became a fan of the Marvel movies. I went back, rewatched all of them, right? Loved it. And it's like, I became a fan of Marvel movies towards the end of the hype cycle because after marvel avengers endgame we haven't even got a single good marvel movie uh or i mean technically we got like spider-man spider-man's all right i mean doctor strange all right but doctor strange the original is so much better than doctor strange 2. the sequels by the looks of it nowadays the sequels are never good the first parts are always i mean dune 2 that's debatable like uh, I, I think that sequel was good it, it was loved by the the, the fans uh, so there's that was made with a little under $200 million with a smaller budget than Ant-Man and the Wasp. Call of Duty Crazy. represents more than just aspects of the gaming industry that need critical attention. Yay. It represents just what not to do Yay. to remain sustainable in the entertainment industry. It's emblematic of what happens when talented, passionate devs are stuck at the beck and call of a large conglomerate decision-making process that is disconnected from what's going on inside the building, what's happening in the day to day. Mm. Is it possible for Call of Duty to get back to where it, it sort is. of was? Is honestly, it honestly, I'm gonna be one of the few to uh, one of the few people to say it, it is possible. It just comes down to them making like good ass multiplayer game and zombies, and they're gonna be back. And they obviously gotta fix the cheating problem for Warzone and do more events for Warzone, and that's gonna bring so many people back. I'm not a Warzone player, but listen, I never touch Warzone. But had it been we were getting events. Dog, I would at least give it a shot. And you know what? If I would give it a shot and if I play and if I like it, I would keep. Uh, I would keep playing. But I don't because I don't care for it. And, and secondly, there's no content. And third of all, you constantly hear bugs, uh, skill based management, and all the new content that we get is like skins. Now, listen, Fortnite also does skins and they do crazy microtransactions. But let's be real, they also do drop free and good free content in the game periodically and they also do events like crazy too and those events are free for everybody and they're good so it's like 
even if you don't want to pay, you get content for it. And then it's like, you have played the game so much and you have invested yourself in the game so much that you feel like, okay, you know what? Might as well buy a microtransaction. Might as well do it. I don't play Fortnite, but like whenever I do, I like it. I'm like, holy shit, like the game is fun. It's enjoyable. And that's coming from a guy that just does not like Fortnite. Or I don't hate it, but I don't love it. it like, I don't care for it essentially, but it's like whenever they do event, all of a sudden I'm like, hey, that looks pretty cool. And all of a sudden I like, okay, let me care for it, if that makes sense. So Warzone really got to do it. But guys, let me know your thoughts. Click on this video on the screen because there are a lot of new gameplays that are, uh, new gameplay reveals that are happening. And they are being called as Call of Duty Killer. Click on this video on the screen. Let me know your thoughts. Check it out because there is some, some games that are actually looking really good. But let me know your thoughts and I'll see you right there.